Do you ever meet with someone who's interested in your services? You have that connection. They want to go further. You share what it's like to work with them, and then you state your fees. And that's when you hear, why do you cost so much? So this is Warren Fogelman with Business Success Solution, and I want to be able to give you some insights about the question, what's behind it, and how to be able to think about another way of responding to it instead of caving into the pressure. So something to think about is that when you answer that, why do you cost so much and why your alley, what's your alley rate, too soon, it actually backfires. And especially when you get someone that's reaching out to you and one of the first things they want to know right away is what's your alley rate? I'm going to say for sure answering that one too quickly is going to backfire. And a lot of reason why this comes up and they really don't understand why you're charging that much is because they don't have the sign, they don't have the all the information that they need in order to make a decision or to see the value in you. So Something to think about is that when someone is asking you, why do you charge that much? Then it's usually one of three reasons. The very first one is, this is someone who is price sensitive. They want to be able to get a lot of their extras or the exceptions, but they want to pay rock bottom prices. So that is one type of client. They want to know why you charge so much because they just want to get as low fees as possible. And then the second one is what I call a poker player. They are someone who has the belief that they ought to always ask for a discount because if you don't ask for one, you'll never get one. But if you ask every now and then, someone's going to go ahead and give them a lower price than what they were originally told. So they're playing poker. They might still be interested in, pay in your services and they might even be willing to pay the full fee that you just quoted them. They just have a rule that they will always ask for a discount no matter what. So that is something to think about is that second person is the poker player. And the third person is actually interested. However, they don't have all the information yet. They haven't seen the full value of your services. Maybe something's confusing or they have some additional questions that they haven't asked yet. But whatever it is, is they might still be interested. They just don't see the full value yet. So those are three types of people that are going to ask you why you charge so much is that price sensitive person, the poker player, and the person that still has some unanswered questions. They're not fully seeing the value yet. So what I want to say is do not get defensive. Don't cave in. Avoid giving that knee-jerk reaction where you're immediately lowering your rate before they even ask for a discount. Those are things that happen all the time. They might even have happened for you. And I simply want to say, be aware that this question will come up. That's okay. It's not a bad thing. And you want to be able to know how to respond in order going to a more reactive mode that wasn't very beneficial before. And it's not going to serve you well now either. What you really want to do is get curious. You want to understand if they're actually price shopping, that's your price sensitive client, or if they need more information, which would be the person who is interested, but it still has those unanswered questions. And the way to be able to figure it out is by getting curious. Ask a couple of questions. One of the questions you might want to think about is, what's been the cost of not solving this and, and continuing to have that problem? And, and that's going to give you some insights about the frustrations, how this has been taking more time than expected. It's keeping them from doing something else. Maybe it's overflowing into their personal life or they've been leaving money on the table because they don't have the solution. So you want to be able to find out what is the cost of not solving this problem. The other thing is you want to find out what would be possible if I was able to fix this and you now had accurate up-to-date up financials, you had a really solid tax advantage. So you want to be able to flip that question and find out what's possible because this gives you some idea as to their priorities and they're not the priorities of fixing this. This is about priorities of moving forward. There's something future focused. So those two questions 
which are not the typical questions you might think to ask, start to give you some insights about the value from the client's point of view. Once again, what's the cost of not solving this problem? And if I could fix this for you, what will be prop possible if you now have accurate financials and a really solid tax strategy? Uh, the other thing is that I want you to really understand that you want to cherry pick your clients. Not everyone's going to be a great fit for your firm. You don't want to have 100% of the people that you're meeting with say yes to you. I want you to really start to think about who is a right fit and being selected because not everybody is a great fit for your firm. So we want to be able to engage people that realize that your firm is an event and is, is an investment. It, you offer solutions, you make a difference, you give them financial health great tax strategies that they weren't getting otherwise. You're proactive. So think about the value that you bring to the table. And then when this comes up, because it will come up and they want to know why you cost so much, or they want to know right off the bat, what's your hourly rate? You have a way to respond instead of just going back to the reaction of giving a discount before they even ask or closing down the conversation too soon. You now know some tools, some strategies to keep the conversation moving forward because you're now getting curious about what's behind those price objections. So if this interests you, you wanna be able to really show up with owning your value, being able to follow through with the conversation, not getting flustered when someone is asking you, what does it cost so much? What's your hourly rate? Then join me for a complimentary massive class where I'm focusing on stop competing on price and confidently answer the what's your hourly rate question. So once again, the webinar is on stop competing on price and confidently answer the what's your hourly rate question. It's on Wednesday, March 13th at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 o'clock Pacific. You can go ahead and see all the details for that at businesssuccesssolution.com forward slash hourly. And I look forward to having you join me so we can even get further into this so you can always stand by your value and know how to respond when people are bringing up those price objections or want to know right off the bat what your hourly rate is. Anyway, let me know what you took away from this, any feedback, any other topics that interest you. Would love to be able to hear your insights, what resonated, and I look forward to further conversations. Lauren Fogelman, showing county firm owners how to double their income, working half the time.